us open to the book of Judges, chapter number 14, and we'll get right in our study this evening. We're missing quite a few people uh, they are gone uh, tonight, but we can't wait on them. We'll have to go right on with this tonight, so uh, let's get our Bibles open. We begin tonight, in, to, in, in my opinion, uh, one of the most colorful, exciting characters in the whole Bible, uh, the man Samson. What a, what, a, what a man, I'm telling you. Uh, and so we're going to learn about human nature in this chapter tonight. We're going to learn about uh, some things that he did, and we'll get uh, right into it this evening. I want you to keep your Bibles open and follow along with me, and then we'll have a time which you can ask questions or whatever, whatever you want to do. But this, this is one of the most amazing guys in the Bible to me is the story of Samson. Uh, as I've been saying over and over and over, it's an amazing study on human nature. Human nature is a, is a thing. If, if you ever got human nature figured out, you could write a book on that and be a genius. Uh, psycho psychiatrists and psychologists try all the time to, for behavioral problems and temper problems and this and that. It ain't a thing in the world but fallen nature of humanity. Fallen By fallen, I mean... Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, the whole human race fell. And what we are tonight, what we are here tonight is our, our, we are flawed, fallen creatures, saved by the grace of God, and the Lord's in our heart, but uh, our, our bodies and our old nature is flawed, big time. So you're going to see some good and bad in the life of Samson, and you're, you're going to see maybe yourself a little bit in the life of Samson, and uh, Samson had some problems, but he was, a great, he was a great man in a lot of ways also, fighting the battles of the Lord and, uh, and, and, kill, and killing the enemies and, and all that kind of stuff. Great, great, great man, great study. Every little boy, I guess, used to uh, learn, love the story of Samson, big, strong muscles and things like that. There's nothing in the Bible that says Samson was any bigger physically than any of the rest of us. He might have been, but where he got his strength was the Spirit of the Lord come on him. When the Spirit of the Lord come on him, buddy, you better get out of his way. And that's a picture of how me and you can be, even out here Saturday, giving out these things. Let's pray the Spirit of the Lord will come on us, and we'll, we'll fight the Lord's battle. So here we go. Judges chapter 14. In the last two verses of 13, she bare a son named Samson. That means a light son, like S-U-N, Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him in verse 24 of the last chapter. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him every now and then. Now, verse 14, and Samson went down. That could be symbolic right there. He went down. Probably means more than we think. Uh, in, to Timnath, and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. You see what you just read there? You saw it. number one, he went down, and number two, he saw a woman. And buddy, that's when his problems began. He saw a woman. Now, you, books have been written, movies made, novels wrote, all because a man saw a woman. Isn't that something? Think about that, y'all. Think about how the Holy Spirit put that in the Bible. You know where his trouble started? He saw that woman. How many men could say, Preacher, that was started all my trouble the first time I saw a woman. And God made women last, the last thing he ever created in all of creation was women. That was the most beautiful part of creation is a woman and a man. Uh, as you've heard me say over and over and over, a man falls in love with what he sees. And I mean, good night. I mean, it's all the paintings and all the pictures and all the movies and all the... I saw a woman. Somebody said, boy, that's, that began his trouble right there. My, 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 my. Uh, the, and she was a Philistine. That means she was not a Jew. She was, of a, she was a, a sinner. She was not saved. He went down and he said, man. Right there is the one I want, right there. He didn't ask, was she saved? He didn't ask, did she serve the Lord? He didn't ask. That's where he made his mistake, right there. And history is filled with them kind of stories. And it works the other way around, too. But tonight, we're studying this, and it said, he saw a woman of the daughters 
of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and mother and said, I have seen a woman. Uh, you know, I didn't talk to her. I didn't ask her what doctrine she believed. I, but I just saw her. That's all I needed right there. Uh, somebody asked me, they said, you believe in love at first sight? And I, uh, no, I, I believe in lust at first sight. I believe in attraction at first sight. I believe in, uh, what do you call that, chemistry at first sight. There's people you meet, man, you just, I mean, you know, there's sparks fly. When you're at, but, uh, but not love, that, that takes a little longer than first sight. I have heard people say they did it. I, 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 I don't know. But uh, he, all he took, he's seen her, man. And when he's seen her, he wasn't worth a dime after that. You ever seen anybody like that? I, I used to, you know, in our church uh, uh, up in Marion, and uh, teenage boys, and they'd be on fire for the Lord. They'd get their Bible and sit on the front row and everything. They'd just sit there and, and nod their head and look at every scripture, and they wasn't worth a dime as soon as they got a girlfriend. Just as soon as they got a girlfriend, they started sitting about halfway back, then we, and the whole time they sit there and looked at her, and they talked to each other the whole time. Wasn't worth a, a hoot for God as soon as they saw a woman. And um, the Lord made it that way, but you got to you have to really be careful. He said, "I've seen a woman of the daughters of Philistine." Here's what he told his mom and dad: "Get her for me to wife. I want to marry her." A little hasty there, ain't you, son? Uh, uh, but, but you know what that is? That's lust. Lust says, "Hurry up! Hurry up! I don't want to wait. 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 Why do we have to wait? Why do we have to wait? Why do we have to wait? Why do we have to wait?" That's lust. Uh, Love says, chill out, take your time, it ain't going nowhere, it'll still be there in a few months, but lust says, yes, come on, come on, let's go ahead, let's go ahead. And so Samson's trouble began in verse 1, he saw a woman. Ain't that a study of human nature? He saw a woman, saw a woman. How many, how many movies have we seen where guys' lives were ruined? Start out, they saw a woman at work. I, they saw a woman at the gym. They saw a woman at, at the softball game. They saw a woman down the street. They saw a woman. And so Samson's problems began when he saw this woman. And he said, I want to marry her. Look at verse 3. Then his father and mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, somebody that looks like us, believes like us, preaches like us, has the same convictions, has the same customs, they, we dress the same, we talk the same, that thou goest take a wife to uncircumcised Philistine? Say, Samson, can't you find you a good godly girl? And you know what he said? Yeah, but they're all ugly. She's pretty. I've heard that a hundred times. Boy, is that, uh, some old boy get an old wicked girl, and I say, man, what's wrong with you? He said, have you seen all the girls at our church, preacher? Uh, they're, they're all ugly. And girls say the same thing. All the boys are ugly. All, uh, I'll bet you he wish he'd had a got one time he got through. Uh, time he, he winds up a blind, wretched suicide here in a, couple, a few chapters. And old Samson, he said, uh, they said, couldn't you, couldn't you get a godly girl, a, a one of us? That a Christian girl, in, in other words. Um, and he said, no, I want her. Bible said, many strong men have been slain by her. Pretty women. Pretty women. Now, the truth is tonight, you may not want to admit this or not, but that's what the world, that's how the world makes their money. You've heard the illustration. You've heard preachers, uh, the, they say on news, sex sales. That's a fact. They can't sell dog food, toothpaste, or nothing without putting a, a pretty woman. Have you ever noticed, like, turn on Fox News, CNN News, all the women commentators are pretty. You know why? It ain't because they're so smarter. Now, some of them are smart. You mean tell me there ain't no smart, ugly women? You'll never see one on there. You know why? Because they know people want to see a pretty woman. Everybody in here, male or female, if a pretty woman walked in that door right there, every one of y'all, and I'm talking, I ain't talking about being no reprobate lesbian or nothing. You just say, wow, she, she's, a, she's a beautiful woman. You would. And, and it's, it's, it's in your nature. Even if you don't admit that, it's the truth. And, and for a man, you can't do that and have lustful thoughts because that's adultery. And if you're a woman, Lord, if you lust, I mean, you're really in bad shape. But a woman appreciates the beauty of another woman 
even though she don't want to admit it. And, uh, and that's what happened here. That's what happened. It's plain as day. He, he said, I want her. Samson said, get her for me. She pleaseth me well. He said, I, 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 TVs, mu- movies, they, cheerleaders, school, they all, the pretty girls. The pretty girls have the edge. The pretty girls get the job. The pretty girls get, that ain't right and it ain't fair, but that's the way the world operates. And so uh, that's human nature. Human nature right there. Old Samson says, I want to marry her. And Mama said, Samson, can't you find a girl around here that, that goes to church and serves the Lord? He said, she pleaseth me well. These girls go to church, but they're, they have buck teeth. And he said, Samson, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Beauty's only skin deep. And he said, I know, but that's one I want. I mean, you couldn't tell him. You couldn't tell him no different. He wanted that woman. And that was strike one. He's going to strike out here in a, in a week or two. Three strikes, and he's out. But uh, look at verse 4. But his father and mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he saw an occasion against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Now, that's an interesting verse right there. And that means this. It might not have been God's will for Samson to have that woman, but God had a plan and a purpose in it. By his foreknowledge, the Lord knew Samson was going to marry her, and he had this plan to deliver Israel. Isn't that weird? Uh, uh, isn't it funny how that even the Bible said that God makes the wrath of man to praise him? Do you know that even heathen, Her- uh, Pharaoh and all them, they was living in rebellion, but somehow or another God worked it out to his own purpose. And uh, that's what happened with Samson. Verse 4. Let's look at verse 4. Let's look at verse 4. Uh, God had a purpose in it. 5. said, then went Samson down. That's not... Not an accident, that's in the Bible. Went down again. He went down verse 1, saw a woman. Went down verse 5, and, uh, and his father and his mother to Timnath. He took his mom and dad to meet her and get her, and so he could marry her. He came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. And so Samson, come, the spear of the Lord came out mightily upon him, and he rent him, the lion, as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Think about that. Now, that word rent, old English word, means to rip, tear apart. Rent, like his garments rent, his clothes rent. Rent. Now, we talk about renting something. We're talking about like renting a house or renting an apartment or something. But rend, to rent, to rent something, tear it up like that. And old Samson out here, his mom and dad was off down the the way down there, they're sitting in a restaurant or something. He wasn't with them. They was going down to Timnath to get that girl, and, and he's going to propose to her. And while he did, this lion comes out of the out of the out of the thicket, and a lion came after him. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God came on him, and he took his bare hand. It said he had nothing in his hands. Now, buddy, if you can fight a, a roaring lion with your bare hands. You won, they say a German shepherd has a bite of a clamp of something like good night, four or five hundred pounds of pressure, and a lion could be fifteen hundred pounds of pressure. In other words, a, a grown lion, he could just snap my arm off like it wasn't nothing. Bing, just like that right there. Or, or my leg. He could, I mean, he, he, but Samson grabbed him probably, or I don't and go, and tore that thing and left him laying there. Now let's see what happens in this story here tonight. And he, tur- he, he uh, tore this line up here. That's what little kids like. They love stories like that. And after a time, uh-oh, verse 7, and he went down, went down again, went down again. That ain't an accident. The Spirit of God put that in the Bible. Three times he went down. He should have never fooled with her. He should have never fooled with her. I had a man tell me at church, right back there in the vest in their lobby this past Sunday, he said, man, that's the biggest mistake I ever made. I got married when I was uh, 20, and I didn't know what I was doing and everything. He, he made a mistake, and he's paid for it ever since. He went down in verse 1. He went down in verse 7. He went down in verse 5, uh, and maybe another place. Went down, 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 down. And talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. Man, she looked pretty. She had her makeup on. 
She had lipstick. She smelled so nice. Her hair was up. And Samson said, oh, you're the one for me. He didn't ask her. She was a Philistine. Worship false gods and everything. Yeah, it didn't matter. I'll convert them, mom and dad. She'll get saved. How many times you heard that? And most time that's the other way around. Most time it's a girl, and they drag some boy in here, and I says, he saved? Well, no, but I think I can win him over. I've even had girls tell me, they said, uh, I, I think after we get married, he'll go to church. I got news for you. If he won't go before you're married, he sure ain't going to go after. And he might quit after you're married. Then you're in a mess, so you better get one that can lead you instead of, instead of you having to drag him along all the time. I'm telling you, girls and boys, I mean, may, many of y'all here are not married tonight, but I tell you, you're, you're better off in no marriage than a bad marriage. No marriage is better than a bad marriage. You hear me? No marriage is better than a bad marriage. You say, well, I'm single and I'm miserable. There's something worse than being single. Let me tell you what it is, being married and being single. That's worse. Preach it, Brother Danny. Amen. And uh, I'll just tell you like it is. Verse 8. And after a time, a little while went by, and that line kind of rotted a little bit. He returned to get her. He returned to take her. He's going to marry her this time. They got engaged in verse 7. He come back to marry her in verse 8. And he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. That's a strange thing. Why would the Lord put something like that in the Bible? Why, I mean, he walked down the road and there's a swarm of bees in there. And it told that in the Bible. The Bible is the most amazing book in the world. And that'll preach. I've heard preachers preach honey in the carcass. Honey in the carcass. And they preach a whole sermon on how that if you live right and serve God, something that's really nasty and terrible in your life, you'll find something sweet and wonderful right in the middle of it. If, if you serve God and do right. There's good preaching and all that. So he looks down and he says, my, ugh. He said, man, there's some honey in there. So he reaches down and dips it and tastes some of that honey. And he says, that's good. And he got him up a bunch of it and got that honeycomb and took it with him. And he went on down there. And the Bible said he didn't tell his mom and dad. And uh, he took thereof in his hands and went on eating. Verse 9, came to his father and mother and he gave them some of it. And they did eat but he told them, them not that he took the honey out of the carcass of the lion. Now, I want to show you something here tonight. That's two times it said he didn't tell his mom and dad something. Twice he deliberately kept something from them. We're not told why. But there was another time in verse 16. He said, I didn't even tell my mom and dad. And Samson sort of began a life of what we call a secrecy, keeping secrets, holding things back. And you've got to be careful when you start hiding things. When you start hiding, I know people start hiding things and say, boy, don't you think, you, uh, have you told your mom that? No, but it ain't, it ain't really none of nobody's business. You've you got to be careful when you start hiding things in your life. You've got to be careful about that. Your life ought to be an open book. Mine ought to, too. Amen. And we ought, we ought not to be ashamed of nothing that we do or know where we go or the people we hang around with and not, not be ashamed of who knows it. That's right. And Samson, uh, as a matter of fact, he violated his uh, Nazarene, Nazar, Nazarite vows because in Numbers chapter 6, in verse 3, it said a Nazarite couldn't come near a dead body. So he not, not just a human, an animal... The other part of the verse says about a human. So if Samson had told his mom, guess what, mom, I killed this lion, and then I went over and got this honey out of his mouth, it would have broke her heart. She'd have said, Samson, I can't believe you did that. You're a Nazarite. You're, and he would have had to shave his hair. He'd have had to shave his hair right then. And you know what? By this time, I think he started liking his hair. That's my opinion. I think he liked, he had them long, bushy, black, curls and I mean look like a look like Lord ain't look like uh, yeah, yeah and he liked that and the girls liked it and they said wow Sammy 
man, you got some cool hair, man. He said, yeah, I know it. And he kept it all pretty and everything. And what? I think he kind of liked it. That's my opinion. The Bible don't say that. But he wouldn't tell his mom that he violated his, his Nazarite vows, which he did. And uh, they, they had uh, some problems over that. Verse 9, he went on eating, told them not. Verse 10, so his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast for so used the young men to do. It's a custom. And it came to pass when they saw him, they brought 30 companions to be with him. He didn't have none of his buddies from back home yet, so he had 30 companions to meet with him and, uh, and, and for, his, uh, for his, uh, his wedding. That was a custom. Now, you see them mentioned over in the book of Matthew, uh, I think Matthew 9, 13, 15, when it said uh, the children of the bride chamber, children of the bride chamber, when a, it was a custom when people got married, those Jews got married, they had, they had children, they had, like, like we have groomsmen and, and uh, what, do call them? what do you call them girls? Bridesmaid, yeah. They have groomsmen and bridesmaid. It was sort of like that. But she had 30 and he had 30, or she had 15 and he had 15, a bunch of guys, and they was all friends. And one of them was his friend. Now, here's, Sam, here's I want you to notice something here about human nature. First, he saw this woman. That got him in a mess. He saw her, and it smote him. She was so pretty. And then, look at, the, look at the personality of this character. Look at 12. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. If you can certainly declare it to me within seven days of the feast and find it out, I'll give you 30 sheets and 30 changes change of garments. But if you cannot declare it, then you give me 30 sheets and 30 chains of garments. And they said, put forth thy riddle that we may know it. Isn't that something? So he's a character. He's a character. He's, he's like, Billy Kelly is like that. Shaq is like that. You know, always joking and cutting up and going on. Big, strong Samson. He said, hey boy, I got, I got a riddle for you. Uh, it was a it's, it's uh, people love that. Kids love that. You know, people, little kids especially love riddles. They say, knock, knock, who's there, you know, and they love to get something on you like that. This was a very, very adult version of that. Uh, it was like uh, uh, Rapunzel or uh, Rumpelstiltskin or somebody. Uh, you know, they watch black and white and red all over. Newspaper, you know, stuff like that. Uh, what do you say to a 10-foot gorilla, sir? Uh, stuff like that. And he said, I got a little, I got a little, I got a question for you. If you can answer me this, I'm going to give you 30 sheets and 30 changes of raiment. Linen, linen sheets, linen changes of garment. And buddy, they said, all right, what is it? And look at his riddle, 14. And he said, out of the eater, that'd be the line, came forth meat, his honey, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. Notice how meat in the Old Testament can refer to fruit, vegetables, anything that you eat, meat. It don't have to be just an animal like, like we think it would be now. So he said, uh, out of the strong, that's the line, came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. And here goes, y'all, watch this. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said to Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee in thy father's house with fire. Have you called to take us in what that we have? Is it not so? Good night, man. These people, man, they're rough, wasn't they? They called his wife and said, Look, we grew up together. You ain't nothing special just because you married Samson. He's the strongest guy in town. We all know it. You think you're hot stuff. Now you better find out what this riddle is or we're going to sneak up here and burn your father's house down with fire. <whistles> Son, that was rough. You say, what in the world they do? Where was the cops? Every man did that which he's right in his own eyes in these days. Everybody took the law into their own hand. That's the book of Judges. Human nature, is, we'll, just, I'll just, we'll just burn your house down if you don't tell us what we want to know. And then she come and turned it on. Look at verse number 17. And she wept before him. Old Samson teased them 
and played around with them. Now, I want to tell you something about Samson, y'all. He kept teasing around and teasing around until he finally got him killed. The Bible says fools make a mock at sin. You know what's got Samson in trouble? Flirting around with Samson. He, 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 uh, he teased him. That's what happened to him and Delilah, remember? He, he said, why are you so strong? And he said, well, if you bind my hair in seven green width, he's getting close, he's getting close. If you bind me with new ropes, and then he'd break them, it's flirting around with it, teasing around with it. You keep fooling around with sin, and it will eventually get you. You keep hanging around the edge, and eventually you're going to slip off. I don't care if it's how strong you are, how dedicated you are. If you keep fooling around the edge, you, my friend, excuse me, will we'll slip off the edge. Now, verse 17, she wept before him seven days, all, every day during the feast. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she lay sore upon him. What does that mean? She lay sore upon him. That means, all you men know what that means. She drove him crazy till he finally told her what she wanted to hear. Don't you men understand that? You can go ahead and nod your heads. Uh, uh, I mean, it's just it's on and on and on and dri uh, drip, 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 drip. I can imagine it's like this. I can imagine it said, Sammy, what does that riddle mean that you told those men? He said, I ain't told my mom and daddy. I sure ain't going to tell you. She said, Sammy, I'm your wife. We're not supposed to have secrets from each other. Please. He said, no. He's a rough old character. I ain't telling you nothing. You need, you got too much free time on your hand. Go, go get the vacuum cleaner out or something. She said, Sammy, here it comes. Here it comes, the magic line. You don't love me. Ain't that what they always say when they really, you don't love me. Man, ain't nothing hurts a man no worse than him to work himself to death by paying bills and working on the house and yard and everything. And then when she wants, she says, you don't love me. That hurts. She knew right where to hit him. You don't love me. That's in the Hebrew. Y'all don't read Hebrew. Sammy, I just feel like you don't love me. Why? I take care of you. I pay the bills. My goodness, I'm the strongest man in town. I could have any woman out here I want. I do love you. She said, well, tell me the riddle. <laughs> he said, no. And the next day, the next day, the next day. And he said, hey, baby, can I have some sugar? She said, no, don't you touch me. You won't tell me your riddle. That's human nature, ain't it? That's human nature. And finally, he says, all right. Now, you promise you won't tell? Oh, I promise. I won't tell nobody. And he told her. And she went straight and told them guys, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. He killed a lion and, and, the, and, the, and the found some honey in it. And that's the eater and that's the strong. Now, verse 18. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day, what is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? Look at this response, ladies. And he said, if you had not plowed with my heifer, you had not found out my riddle. That's rough. <laughs> Ain't that rough? You don't like that, do you? Lord in mercy. That's, that's a, he called his wife a heifer. That's a cow. I didn't write it. I, my job to teach you the Bible. He said, if you hadn't been plowing my heifer, you would have known my riddle. I know where you got this. I just told her last night. And then you come in there, act like you got it figured out. And he got so mad, he left her over that. He left his wife. You don't believe it? Look at the next verse. Um, verse 19, his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. And they separated and the Spirit of the Lord came on him, and he went down to Ashkelon, 20 miles away, and killed 30 men, and took their spoil, and gave change of garments, them which expounded the riddle. 
And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. He got mad and says, listen, if I can't even trust you, you turned me over to my enemies. I had to go kill 30 men. Now look what you caused. Ba -da 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 -da. Bye, I'm out of here. She said, well, I didn't mean nothing by it. I, just, I didn't think it would cause no trouble. I, didn't, I love you. Please don't. Leave. Bam, out the door. They got in a big fight, and they separated. And you know what? Verse 20, his, she, they give, her daddy gave her to somebody else, one of his friends. Good night. That's a soap opera, ain't it? That's a Lifetime Network movie. Uh, I mean, you, uh, you don't want to watch that trash on TV. Read the real thing. That's where they get all that from, right out of the Bible. And so, so, his, so she winds up marrying his best friend. How many times you heard that happening? I know a guy that did that. I know a guy, I know a guy that left his wife. Let's see. He was from here. He left his wife and, and ran off with somebody else's wife and then married her, and then he married the wife, and the husband went to his wife, and they got married. Swap. And that's sort of, sort of like what happened here. That's sort of weird. That's sort of weird. Uh, uh, and, but his wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. You know what that means? Way back there in the book of Judges, human nature never changes, does it? Same as today. You hear stuff like that all the time. That's a Jerry Springer show, brother. I mean, that's, that, stuff, that stuff still goes on today. Human nature never changes. It never changes. If you ain't right with the Lord, you are capable of any wicked, low-down sin in the book. Sinful, our nature is sinful, and the only way you can live right is submit yourself to God and read this book and pray and be led by the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know when Samson was strong? When the Spirit of the Lord come upon him. You know when he was weak? When he was talking to a woman. I mean, that poor boy wound up being a suicide over it, wound up killing himself. I know people kill themselves with stuff like that. I know several preachers that kill themselves and Personally, I think they had, that was their problem. They was, they was looking at pornography or something. They couldn't quit, and their conscience bothered them, and they shot theirself. That's awful. And lots of people do that because they can't get the victory over that lust and stuff. And instead of killing yourself, fast about, and go somewhere about two weeks and take a bottle of water in your Bible and pray to God, and he'll take that stuff away from you. He'll help you, and get, you can get the victory over it. But Samson messed up here. Now, in, in chapter 15, verse 1, we'll have to wait till next week. I'm on, I don't want to get into chapter 15 yet. He, 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 he got over his mad spell, and he visited his wife with a kid. He brought her a, 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 a lamb or a sheep or something, and he said, I will go in to my wife into the chamber. He wanted to, them to get back together, and his father wouldn't let him. And uh, he, her daddy said, man, I thought you hated her the way you left here. Good night, I'll give her to your companion. And her younger sister is prettier than she is. Take her. See how crazy people was then? Good night. I mean, just over and over and over in Judges. It's just lawless, crazy, wicked, unbelievable. That's, that's, some, that's some stuff there, buddy. Uh, here's the daddy. He said, well, you and, you and him had it out and... So you go marry him, and she went over and Samson's friend, and then Samson come back wanting her, and he said, well, here's your younger sister. Take her. Samson said, I don't want her. And he wound up did get in his house burned on top of him. It's a mess. That's a mess. That's human nature. It's an amazing thing. All right, I'm going to stop right there. We're going to get into chapter 15 next time. Now, next Wednesday night's camp meeting, so it'll be two weeks from tonight. Anybody?